Welcome to another video brought to you by FloatingCottonCandy.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the half bubble designed specifically for the RoboJet Floss floating cotton candy machine. Now, in this case, we're talking about a half bubble, and for most people familiar with cotton candy, that phrase doesn't make any sense whatsoever. With your typical cotton candy machine, the floss is made down in the bowl itself, and where you use a bubble, you would use a full bubble in order to prevent any cotton candy from being ejected into the atmosphere. However, with a RoboJet floss, ejecting the cotton candy into the atmosphere is actually the point of the machine itself. So a half bubble is what we want to use because a domed lid would actually prevent the machine from working as intended. Having said that, um, the purpose to the half bubble from our perspective has a couple of different uh, unique advantages. One, it can operate essentially as a spectator shield, uh, keeping small children and guests from reaching their arms into the uh, floss pan, which is very tempting for small children. I've had more than a few have to uh, be pulled back by their parents or occasionally even uh, brushed back slightly by myself as they find the process so fascinating. Uh, more than once I've had people say, what would happen if I stuck my arm in there? Um, as they see the floss generated in midair, they, they kind of want to turn themselves into a cotton candy cone. So this acts as a sort of, shall we say, a human shield. There's also some talk from uh, operators that have concerns about the health department wondering whether or not they can work in an open environment. And in that uh, regard, you could consider this a potential sneeze shield, much like you might see on a salad bar. Now, I've never really heard it verified that health departments are going to require such a device. Um, obviously, they don't in uh, many operations of restaurants where food is prepared directly in front of the guest. I think of things such as Japanese steakhouses, and open grills and fondue restaurants, uh, but you could very well run into some health department inspector who feels you have to have a, uh, a sneeze or protective guard, and rather than arguing the logic with them, it might be better to have this kind of a device um, just because sometimes government bureaucrats are um, immune to logic. But again, that's only been brought up as a potential problem, not as something that's actually been documented so far. Uh, the third, and actually sort of the original design of this half uh, bubble, was to act as a windshield. So here it has uh, two potential uh, benefits and, and, and really one uh, potential drawback. If you're operating outdoors where there's a substantial amount of wind, uh, one of the things about floating cotton candy is it floats. And so wind can divert your stream and, and make it difficult to operate. So having a half bubble allows you to operate down closer to the floss head, and it does give you actually a windshield, which you may have to adjust um, to deal with the oncoming direction of the wind, but it allows you a protected environment where you would be able to develop your uh, cone with some protection from the wind. Now, on the other hand, uh, if you are trying to operate in a low or no wind environment and you want to do a typical jet floss production, which is to say operating much higher so the crowd and spectators can see the floss being developed, or even do things like snake tricks where you're going to allow the floss to follow you several feet or 10 feet or 15 feet or allow it to shoot up into the air and capture it on the way back down. All of the sort of tricks you've probably seen in the other YouTube videos that make this such, a, such an interesting machine and so unique in the marketplace. Uh, then the half bubble can be actually sort of a problem because unless you have a perfectly still environment what will happen is even the most gentle breeze will cause the floss to drift to the edge of the bubble and because it is a regular bubble that has been cut there is still a little bit of a inward bend to the lip. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the video, but as I turn it around to the operator side, you might be able to detect that there is uh, in the last three or four centimeters there is an inward curvature to the bubble. Now, if you're working down low in an actual windy environment, that's not really going to matter. But if you are trying to do tricks and, and air shows, uh, what can happen with a slight gentle breeze, and being a floating cotton candy, it, it doesn't take much. Um, your floss can actually start to hit this lip and start to catch. So you're going to find that it, you're going to have to clean up uh, the edge and you may have to scrape it off from time to time and it may interrupt and make uh, creating air shows slightly more difficult. So for indoor environments, unless it's perfectly still, the bubble might actually be a distraction. Uh, 
Now one thing I plan on doing to uh, test an improvement to this is um, because that curvature is just the last three, four, five centimeters, what I might be doing here in the near future is, is cutting that off of my bubble. But uh, I'm not going to recommend that as a, a standard procedure for owners at this point for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the bubble's about $150, a couple dollars more than that actually. And if I make a mistake, that's, uh, that's completely on me. That is not covered under warranty. So uh, it could turn out to be disastrous uh, uh, of an attempt. Um, so look forward to future videos where you may see me post a video saying, you know, I modified my half bubble and what a great idea it was or something along the lines of um, disastrous plans. Don't attempt to modify your half bubble. We'll, we'll see how that, how that works out. Um, but in the meantime, just realize that if you have any draft at all and you plan on making floss in the air, that this lip can be somewhat of a nuisance. But again, for its intended purpose, which is working down low in the bowl during a windy environment, it certainly provides a good windshield. And in a still environment indoors, it does a good job of providing a human shield, keeping people away from, uh, away from your working environment and keeping them from reaching into the bowl. So quite a number of advantages, uh, between $150, $200, very reasonable, uh, especially compared to most of the competitors, and it is essentially the same type of fabrication. Uh, the one warning I will give you is because of the size of the box this has to ship in, I mean, it's not a, not a small device, uh, shipping charges are uh, absolutely uh, unrealistic. Um, unreasonable actually is I think the word I'm looking for. Uh, whether you do it UPS or FedEx, um, it's light so you wouldn't think they charge a lot, but they have volume penalties so they will charge you on weight or volume, whichever way they can get the most out of you and because of the size of boxes has to come in, uh, the shipping will be unreasonable. So just be forewarned. It's very affordable for what you're getting, very unreasonable in terms of shipping, but as an overall product it has the advantage then of doing a number of things. Uh, a human guard, a potential health department benefit should you run into a picky inspector that thinks you need a, a, a biological type sneeze guard, and then, then obviously a wind guard working outdoors in a lower environment so you can create your floss without the wind uh, disrupting it. Uh, I suppose the fourth thing is that it actually sort of enhances the visual appearance of your operation uh, when you have the bubble on, on top of the floss pan, in particular if you're on one of our carts. It really gives a very polished and professional appearance to the operation and anything you can do to sort of enhance the uh, apparent value and the perceived value of your cotton candy floss and your jet floss operation I think really does pay for itself in the long run. Having said that, look for a future video when I do attempt to modify this, whether it goes right or wrong, I will probably post that online unless I injure myself, in which case I might keep that private. And um, feel free to visit uh, my website, floatingcottoncandy.com, for other tips, tricks, videos, blog articles. And if you are a jet floss operator or seriously considering becoming one, then uh, be sure to fill out a form and ask specifically for my Robo Jet Boss success guide. I do have a hidden page on the website that has links to products that we sell and actually more links to products we don't sell. I try to keep tabs on the best products and solutions available in the marketplace and uh, keep those links updated so that people actually operating with our equipment know how to get the most for their investment. But I do not make that page public uh, for a number of reasons. One, the links change rather frequently. And two, I don't really feel like giving an advantage to competitors and people not using or seriously considering using our products. So if you visit floatingcottoncandy.com, and have a genuine interest or are using a RoboJet Floss, just ask. Uh, I will not spam you after the fact. I'm happy to share the information with legitimate prospects and uh, existing clients. Um, again, just ask for the RoboJet Boss uh, success guide and I will share that information. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for more.